So welcome to Daryl and Vita Dworkin, who are out in Lake Tahoe, Nevada. And uh, Vita and Daryl were um, pillars of the community. And I wanted to reach out to them to reach out to you um, um, because I know that a lot of people know you and would love to hear your story. So we're going to do a twofer this time. Um, and uh, normally it's just with one, but we're going to do a twofer this time. And I don't know who wants to start. So I'll just make a general, tell me your Jewish story and your Jewish journey. Um, actually, I'll start if that's all right. Okay, um, I'm going to start our story, and it's really our story, um, long about 1980, uh, when Vita and I um, Stop the eyes. purchased the Bright Acre in Shrewsbury, New Jersey. And at that time, we, up until that time, we had been part of Temple Emmanuel in uh, Edison. Mm -hmm. And we started doing some temple shopping. I was not overly dedicated and Vita was more dedicated than I. So we started temple shopping and we went to Mammoth Reform and, and we went someplace else and then we came down to uh, Elberon, uh, which at the time was uh, Rabbi Goldberg. Goldman. 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 And um, fell in love with the temple. And Jewish story is kind of hard. What is, what is being a Jew today? It's, it's, it's kind of an interesting question. We both have very similar, and I'll speak for Vita in this, have very similar um, mental thoughts and ideals, and they follow very strictly about do unto others and taking care of the poor and the uh, widows and the orphans and all that. And we became very active in, in Temple Beth Miriam. Um, actually, I was treasurer there for over 20 years. Um, eventually, we did move out of that area. Since coming to uh, Tahoe, um, we have been in two temples here. We were at North Tahoe Hebrew Congregation. And recently, we, we uh, left North Tahoe and moved down to Reno to uh, Temple Sinai. But we continue our affiliation and our support of Beth Miriam. We continue our philosophy. Now, when we started talking to Sai before this was recording, we mentioned that we were just talking about a gentleman of blessed memory, Milt Zimmett. And Milt was an extremely powerful force in our lives and in Vita's life. Because hmm. uh, she decided to have an adult bat mitzvah. Mm -hmm. And would you like to tell a little bit about Milt? No, just he was just a great mentor. And there, there were even times when we were running our business when I would want to do one thing and Daryl would want to do another. And we'd say, hmm, you know, how would Milt handle this? Well, so, what would Milt do? Yeah, what would Milt do? <laughs> and, um, the, the thing that the best part about that was the, the Friday morning class that I attended with 10 or 12 other women that really cemented that whole community aspect of Judaism for us. And um, I think that's the most, that was the most important thing. What are you looking for in a temple? And it, it's community to have, especially Daryl and I came from big business. So a lot of your social life revolved around that. And the next thing we knew we were in, 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 um, new, in uh, by the shore there with no friends, no more connections to business and owning a small business. So 
Temple really provided our, our community for us. And it did that again when we moved to Tahoe. That's how we met people, was through the temple. Um, so I, I think that's a very powerful impact that has affected both our lives. That, that, that's really interesting. Clara G did one of these interviews as well. And we were reminiscing a little bit about Milt. Um, you know, for, for, for the next generation or for people who see these videos who don't know uh, who Milt was, um, you know, they, they, they missed, uh, through no fault of their own, obviously, just a, a, a hugely influential person in the temple. Uh, and uh, there are still uh, bar mitzvah students who talk about him. Uh, although they're not bar mitzvah students anymore, they're 60 years old. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, right? I mean, he passed away a few years ago. He started teaching religious school um, and uh, bar mitzvahs uh, 42 years before he died, or no, 46 years before he died. So, you know, there's, there's 60 year olds who still have these wonderful memories. You know, it's interesting that there are these people who have these kinds of impacts on um, uh, even adults, because you don't usually expect um, adults to be impacted by other adults so much. Yeah, well, I've uh, yeah. Absolutely. And, and interestingly enough, last summer was the 25th anniversary of my uh, bat mitzvah, and we commemorated it with an oneg at our new temple. Oh, that's <laughs> wonderful. Yeah. Uh, and I still have the invitation. So I put that out and it was really just kind of a fun night for us. That, oh, that, 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 okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I get on the wall right back there. <laughs> no, that, that's good. So um, tell me more, tell me about your involvement at Beth Miriam and what kept you so involved? What, what, you know, what, what, I mean, Vita, you did everything in the sisterhood. I don't think there was anything that you didn't do or on the board or in the rabbi search committee or in the rabbi retirement committee, or in the, I wish we would have a rabbi retirement committee. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, no, I, I'm joking, obviously. But, um, uh, you know, and Daryl, you were the, on the board, you were um, there uh, for, uh, what, the treasurer for 20 years? About that, 2022, 20, something like that. You, you know, you've, you've been through a lot of transitions You've seen a lot of transitions at the temple. What kept you so involved and connected? The community. The community. That's the, the only sense word of community. for it. Um, some of our some of our best friends still today. Um, I speak with Harry Silverman not infrequently, not overly frequently, but Harry's a dear friend and Sharon's a dear friend. Um, yeah, I, I, when when you get right down to it, it's people who it's people. Uh, it it's the people. I enjoyed the the work of the sisterhood that we used to do. I was active in the sisterhood here, um, so I guess it's just that that sense that you're doing something useful together, and it just gives you a, a sense of purpose. And I I, I worked on that the search committee, and I still smile when I think of it. And when we were looking for a new rabbi here, it, people were floundering. They just didn't know where to go. And I kept, Daryl kept saying to me, volunteer, volunteer. And I kept saying, no, no. And finally I did do it. And we were, we were pretty successful this go around too here. Um, uh, it, it worked out really well. It was a bit trickier because we have one rabbi that serves two congregations. It's two part-time rabbis because it's a, they're, they're two small congregations, but um, I got, you know, you get some good experience along the way too. She pulled out her notes. I pulled, I went. Oh, the, the, the notebook? Yes, the notebook, <laughs> the notebook. I pulled out the notebook. I've, I've seen it. <laughs> you were part of it. I, I, yeah, I know, I know. So that was kind of a, you know, it was, it was sort of interesting how history repeats itself. It is. The, the thing that was most interesting in all of that, though, was after you, we did the temple survey, it, people are looking for the same 10 things they were looking for 20, what is it, 27, 30 years ago now? 25. 25. Um, 
it, and it was like I I looked at the two surveys and it was it was really pretty interesting how that that that, that that is interesting. So you know that now that we're we're, we're sharing rabbi stories, um, I, I I'll I'll share a couple of things and and just interject anywhere. So um, I remember at the interview, right at the interview, there were like which twenty. One? Well, yeah, which one? The the big one with twenty five people. You know, oh, the, the, oh the, yes, the, yes, right. Where Paula was sitting in the center with that red power suit, <laughs> and, and there are certain things I'll just never forget. And Ralph Kahn was there, a blessed memory, and 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 Alan was there, and uh, um, um, Milt was there, and everybody was there, and you guys were there too. And we're right in the middle of this thing, and and. Uh, um, I, I'm not to this day. I'm not entirely sure why you did it, although I could guess. You wanted to see whether I could think on my feet, um, but you said, uh, you know, I think it was uh, Daryl. You said, you know, me, Vita, and I are having our like what was it, fifteenth wedding anniversary, tenth wedding anniversary? <laughs> yeah, long time ago. <laughs> right, long time, right. We're, we're having our fifteenth wedding anniversary. Give us a blessing. Oh, that's right. Do yeah. you remember that? Yes. Yeah. So do that I. Yeah. yeah. And 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 it was, uh, uh, the, uh, but I wasn't threatened. Um, I you know I, I I wasn't threatened. It was, it was uh, you know these are people um, that have an idea of what they're looking for, and um, yeah, they want to see if I can think on my feet, but they really love each other because nobody has ever <laughs> asked me. <laughs> to give them a blessing for their wedding impromptu. Until we went to Israel. Remember I did that wedding in front of the Western Wall, the Kotel? Yes. yes. Yep, yep. Um, you know, there, 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 you know, there were so many memories. I remember, Daryl, when you picked me up from the airport and Digger, which was a gray schnauzer, oh. <laughs> was all Why? over me. Huh? White schnauzer. White schnauzer. Digger was a little white. He was a rare white schnauzer. That <laughs> He's we, right here on my we, desk. We have pictures of him on our desk. He, he looked gray to me. <laughs> <laughs> he may have been dirty that day. Didn't you have two? Didn't you have two? Yes. Yeah. We had a gray. That was that was BJ. 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 Right. Well, now we have a black one. <laughs> oh, you have a. You, oh, you still have another dog. Yes. You know, but, the, you know, there are certain things that, uh, all joking aside, that when, uh, you know, when people come into a congregation, um, there's there's a first impression. But there's, the, the and, and the first impression is what they're impressed with, with the people in the congregation. Yeah, you know, the rabbi makes a first impression, the cantor, even the front office, but it's the other people in the congregation. What's the secret to longevity in a congregation for board Warm members? and inclusive. Yeah, just welcoming people welcoming. too, I think. That's um, that's probably the most important thing when you when you're new and you, you're coming for the first at first few times. How do how do people treat you those first few who, times? Who walks over and, and says, says hello? hello? Or you're new. We've you know I've, I've we've not never seen met you before. before. Who are you? Who, who are you? And has that happened in all of your Jewish experiences? Yeah. Yeah. Just every temple has had that happen. Some more, some less. It, interestingly enough, and, the temple here on the North Shore is very much more casual, and to our surprise. Um, after we left that temple and went to the one in Reno, which is a bit more formal, where the rabbi wears a suit and it's like a real service and a sermon every week, we said, wow, this is just like Beth Miriam. That's right. We're home. Um, so, it, and there are some people that just love the fact that it's so informal up here. You sit in a circle and you, you know, you wear corduroys and a sweater is getting dressed up. Um, so it, it just... It's it's just very interesting how each group is a little bit different, but we really felt that was one of the things we really liked when we went down to Reno. It was more like, we kept saying, it's more like what we were used to. We like it better. And a lot of music. This temple has a lot of music. Interesting. And we do, they, really do, they have, do they have a cantor? 
they have two rabbis, one of which could be a cantor easily. Yeah, she was a music major in college. It's a husband and wife team. And, oh, uh, so they serve to the, both, both congregations, a husband and wife? No, 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 that, no, that's down in Reno. In Reno, it's a husband and wife team that served this one congregation. It's a little bit larger. It's, uh, <laughs> when we say a little bit larger, uh, North Tahoe is like round numbers, 100, 110 families. Down there, it's 160 to 180 families. It's a nice size. Okay. It's, yeah. a, it's a nice. But we have a huge uh, conservative population there too, which is very interesting. Um, yeah, yeah that, that is interesting. Well, our in our museum, believe it or not, Nevada does have a museum of art. Um, but uh, one of the big patrons to that museum is a he, is he Syrian? That's that's yeah, yeah, Syrian. A Syrian Jew that owns a huge casino. Because of him and his influence, we have Shabbat dinners at the museum and we'll get 150 people on That's the front beautiful. For, for a Shabbat dinner. And when, when Israel had a birthday celebration, there were over 700 people in the ballroom. Yeah. with Pre-pandemic. Yeah, and Pre we were like, this is Reno. <laughs> this isn't New York or Philadelphia. What the heck's going on? But Yeah, if you um, feed them, they will come. If you well, no, you pay <laughs> mightily for these events, and they still come. <laughs> oh, that that's true. That's true. Um, best Jewish experience. Best Jewish marrying Vita. Oh, oh, that, oh, Daryl, I'll tell you what. what if you ask me, what the a best heart throb. Second best Jewish experience. <laughs> I think thing. studying my adult education classes, that's what I would have to say. Um, yeah, because I, I like that. That's interesting. A little something over and above. And studying what? What really grabbed you? It, you know, it, uh, there, I don't know. Um, Probably just the, the weekly Torah portion when I used to do that with the women and, and Milt. Um, but then like we have um, like three lesson or five lesson things on various subjects. Right now they're doing one on racism. Well, uh, where, where you're at now? Yeah. yeah. Where, where are you Temple at now? Temple Sinai, Reno. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Most challenging Jewish experience. You really want to hear that? <laughs> well, let's yeah. Not, let's not go let's there. Let's not go there. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, that's always a hard question. That's a hard question. It, 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 it might be easy to answer, but it's also very difficult to answer, especially when everything is public. Um, uh, Vita, your... Um, uh, your Jewish involvement um, is um, uh, not just the sisterhood and not just uh, the board, uh, but weren't you also involved, unless I'm mistaken, weren't you also involved in community and federation and things like that? No, no. Um, we used to help with the, the food drives, but nothing, you know, not, not on an ongoing basis. Maybe that's what I'm thinking. You know, that could be, and that, that might be. be one of the the nicest things that we did too. Which uh, asking yes. that question made me think of it. Um, we always had the truck there to take the food over to the, and that always gave us a really good feeling um, that we were doing some good in the area. In the community, in the, and it was it was it was visible. Community. Yeah, I remember every Yom Kippur or Rosh Hashanah, you would you would put the park the truck right on the grass in front of the temple. <laughs> Yep. And tear up the grass. <laughs> tear up the Just grass. Just right there a little bit. And then we'd fill this uh oh, 16 I don't know, foot what, truck. Uh, with, with 16 foot truck, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, with, with food. And um it, it really was a visible symbol of what a community can do. We put in at one time, we had one food drive that hit 2,500 pounds. I re I remember that. I that, think that was most, a good year. The most memorable for me is still one of the early ones. And this, this is a story I love to tell. Um, 
we normally dropped off food at three sites, um, three food banks in the area. And this one Yom Kippur, we had extra food after dropping off and filling up three different pantries. And we're driving the truck back to Asbury Park where our warehouse was, and we still had some food on. And we're passing on uh, Main Street, the Sisters of Mercy, Mercy mm -hmm. Center. Right. And for whatever reason, we pulled into the back and knocked on the back door and asked, was there a food pantry? And one of the sisters who had opened the door looked stunned and said, yes, we have a food pantry. And those of us on the truck said, well, we have some food. Would you like, could we drop it off? And we dropped off all the rest of the food we had. And I'm going to choke up because this is a true story and I choke up every time I tell it. Um, and we're getting ready to go back to the truck. And the sister said to us, um, there, God bless you, or there is a God or whatever. Our food pan, our food pantry was empty. Oh. And mm. just an amazing coincidence. And from that day on, we always dropped off at Sister of Mercy. We included uh -huh. them. That's yeah. beautiful. That's a beautiful story. That's a beautiful story. And, and it's especially in today's world where we see these lines of food bank. It's just it's, it's heartbreaking to, it is. to see it. It's heartbreaking. Uh, and it's one of the things that you, you ask about our what makes us Jewish or our Jewish story. Um, that's been for Vita and I a particular part of our story. And our charitable giving. Our charitable yeah. giving and our giving of food and our giving of support to the poor. Um, Sai, as you know, I, I do a bit of tinkering. Uh, some could say I'm an inventor. And uh, right now I'm donating one of my latest projects, the test, test units, to um, support the hospital here and, and the food bank here. Um, what does it do? So, well, it's, I call it kayak coaster and it's a thing to move kayaks in and out easily. Um, but instead of paying me for it, give $40 to either the Incline Hospital or to the uh, food bank, Nevada Food Bank, and show me the receipt and you get a free one. Oh, I see. I see. And that, so it's kind of like Dunkin' Donuts. Show me your vaccination yeah. card and I'll give you a donut. And I'll yeah. give you a donut. <laughs> I like that. I, that's, that's wonderful. But I, you know, I also consider it uh, tzedakah um, to, uh, you know, to volunteer and to donate time and effort and spirit at, 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 in, in the Jewish community, whether it's at the temple or whether it's in a, in, in a class or, um, uh, you know, even something as, as, you know, relatively mundane as, you know, a Sunday breakfast with the rabbi, you know, because when you're, when, you know, when you're giving, <laughs> when you're giving of yourself, um, it, it, it changes the atmosphere. I mean, anybody can go to a casino. Right. Anybody can be entertained by somebody else, but it takes a very special kind of person or group to to be self-supporting and to to be with each other in in good times and not so good times. And, you know, I mean, as a congregation over 25 years and especially when you were there, too, we had lots of good times. We had lots of not so good times. There were lots of weddings and bar mitzvahs and there were a, there were a lot of shivas and there was a lot of pain. And, um, you know, the only way that uh, many of us could get through it was, you know, with each other and knowing that we have each other. 
Um, and, and I know that there are personal examples and stories that all three of us can, you know, can, can you share. Can go back to. Yeah. Right, right. Because... Well, I would, I would, you know, since you brought that up, I just, I do want to share, I, I'm sure lots of people have gone through losing someone during this pandemic. But I have to say the, the, the Zoom, we went to a, a graveside service that was streamed. And then we also did some shivas within two different um, temples. And it, you think that maybe it's not going to be comforting, but it was. So if anybody has a hesitancy about doing that, don't have a hesitancy. Right. It, it, we found it to be a very good, inclusive thing. It, it, it is. And it, it, it's interesting. It's, it's a whole different way of leading a service, obviously. Um, um, but it, it, is, it is comforting because you know what? We're all together. We're all there as a community. And even a virtual presence is real. And maybe that's the sermon for Rosh Hashanah. Even a virtual presence is real. Yeah, that, I think that's, that, that encapsulate, encapsul, encapsulates, encapsulates my whole thought that while it's not, you know, it's not being there in a person and you can't hug each other, but even for good times and bad, Zoom is not a bad thing. I know everyone's getting Zoom fatigue, but it was a very good way to help us get through this awful year. Right. We I mean, we both uh, had both our shots now. So we're... We feel like we've been let, we've out, been of let out of jail. We had our first lunch in an igloo <laughs> outside uh, this week. And that was terrific. But we're still mostly Zooming. Sure. We still wear masks. Good. Uh, and we're going to continue because we don't want to take a chance. Um, and you don't want to take a chance of giving this to anybody else. Yeah, I mean, right. that, that's, you, you, you know, that's, that's, that's your whole sense of responsibility, you know, um, and, and, you know, whether it's just basic humanity or whether it's Jewishly influenced, um, it, it is who you are and, and all through your, uh, adult lives anyways, I don't know about your life as children, uh, but all through your law, your, your adult lives. I mean, this is what seems to be driving you, this whole giving of yourself, um, not a bad way to be known, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Not, not a bad way to be known. So I have one more question for you. Okay. Which nobody else knows except Vida and me. <laughs> Daryl, what famous thing did you invent that everybody knows about? <laughs> and here it is. Here it is. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Daryl Dworkin invented the rubber ducky that was used on Sesame Street. Actually, invented is not quite correct. Oh, okay. What was I, the, what's I the am word? I am the rubber ducky's father, <laughs> and uh, uh -huh. the concept was not mine. Okay. The concept came from an outside inventor. I worked for a toy company at the time, and um, I was responsible for the art, directed the art directed the, the mechanics because this is a little different than has to flow to the time yeah and we keep one on our desk and we keep one on our desk <laughs> and took it to a children's television workshop where it was the first product ever to pass and get licensed by children's television workshop on the first pass now is that the very duck that bert used in the bathtub <laughs> no no oh. no Bert, Bert, the song and um, the song and the and the one in the bathtub was a totally different one. This came out as a result of the song. Oh, but this was the first toy. Oh, this is the first toy. I guess the first one that was actually in the bathtub might be in the Smithsonian. Possibly, <laughs> might be. I mean, that's interesting. Now we won't talk about the Barbie that uh, had the uh, racy recordings on it. <laughs> no, we can't. <laughs> that, that, you know, th that's the great thing about hearing stories from the two of you over these years is I get to hear all of the great stories that I can't tell anybody. Yeah. You can't tell that one because it's a little too racy. <laughs> but 
But I've been trying to get a clip clop. Now, clip clop was the first sound on a chip. Art of, uh, natural sound on a chip was in okay. its form. And uh, at that time, I worked for CBS. I couldn't do the, I could do the keying. I could make the sound be where I wanted it to be in the motion, but I couldn't do the sound on a chip. Uh, that was done by CBS Labs. Things have, things have progressed a little since then. Yeah, we're um, now on our phones. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, what else do you want to add about anything about your Jewish journey? That it never ends. It never ends. I like that. I like that. Okay. Yeah. Um, if you stay online just for one second, I'm just going to turn the recording off. Okay.